Hey guys, I am always on the lookout for cool little utilities that can make my life as a photographer a bit easier. And one of those tasks is batch processing photographs. Now, I'm on a Mac and I have an application called Hazel, which monitors all my drives. Notice is when I plugged in an SD card, moves all the photos to a particular place on my main photo drive, and then I can just add them directly in Lightroom. And I've been looking for a similar app that does the same job on a Windows PC, and I have now found one, and it's called Batch Photo. And I just thought I'd give you a little look at it, run through its main uh, capabilities, show you what it can do, and you can see whether it'd be a good fit for your photography post-processing workflow. So here's the app I'm talking about today, guys. It's called Batch Photo, and it is available for both Mac and Windows. So here is the main window. This actually comprises two parts. There's this where you kind of set everything up. And it's also got a monitoring tool up here where you can add folders and have the application watch them. So let's talk about just a, a manual workflow for the time being. So you can get a quick grasp on what it's capable of. All you do is bung a load of photos in here. I've just picked a random folder from my drive. Let's just select a random selection there and stick them in. The next thing we need to do is set up what we want to have happen to these photographs. And you do that in this edit photos tab. Now you can queue up as many processes as you want from the catalog in the uh, add filter section in this window let's go in here and start with this annotate section the most useful parts of this particular bit of software as far as i'm concerned are in these two sections here the annotate and transform you can do basic touch up and stuff like that but i don't normally do that on a batch process so let's have a look in annotate first and we can add a comment we can add a date we can add a text watermark we can add a logo or we can add a watermark mask i think the most useful ones here are the date possibly and the watermark mask so if you wanted to automate adding your watermark to your images you could do it with this if you just want to add the date you just click on it say okay and then you can configure the date to look exactly the way you want we can turn this from the bats ass crazy american month day year system to the much more sensible european day month year we can configure the font use any font we want stick uh now helvetica new on there nice and big obviously you can set the color when you're happy with how it all looks you just click ok and that filter is configured and now you can add others so let's go back in here and let's say i wanted to add my watermark to it click ok then I just need to browse to it. Now I can change the size of that to be as big or as small as I want. Let's shrink it down and click OK. Now we've got two things going on. Firstly, it's going to add the date as arranged here. And secondly, it's going to add a watermark. Now you don't have to have both happening at once, of course. You can just do one or the other. Now, as you can see, the window's updated and we've got a preview of how everything looks. You can also add comments and stuff. You just want to add some copyright text, for instance. This would be a fabulous way of doing that. If you're a news gathering organization and you wanted to put that copyright information on all your images, this is a really quick and easy way of doing it. And let's go into transform. So the most useful tools in here, as far as I'm concerned, are rotate, crop, and resize. They're pretty common things that you might do to photographs. So for instance, we've got a basic resize or we've got a more advanced version, which enables you to also change the DPI of the image. And that really is useful, actually, because if you're in a situation where you want to get your photographs from the standard 300 DPI print resolution that they come off the SD card, you want to bump them down to a web-friendly 72 DPI, this would be very easy to do. And so let's choose that as an example. So I'll click on Resize Advanced, and there we go. It's already set to 72. We want to keep the actual 
dimensions the same, or maybe because we're going to put it online, we want to change it to a slightly more web friendly size, say 2000 pixels on the long edge at 72 DPI. We've also got these cool little default presets built in here to change it to the folder's name, the photo date, or we can define our own. Hey, we're doing a series of photos. You can start a counter, so one through whatever, and it will tack that number onto the end of the image. And you can add the date and time and all sorts of stuff. So it's a very cool way of transforming your file names of your photos from the default camera to something slightly more useful. So once you're happy with your filters and the uh, preset you set up, here's our output destination here. I'm just got it set to a folder on my computer. Then we get to choose the file formats. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of choice in here. Don't know if there's any file format ever device that's missing from this list it's pretty comprehensive and all the better for it now before we click off this there is also this option to upload the files to an ftp folder which could be extremely useful in certain circumstances for instance i could use it so that when i upload my images i transfer them all over to my computer off the sd card that they all get transferred over to my photo blog and then the media library can pick those photos up and i can simply and easily add them to my photo blog and finally when everything's all set up and you're ready to go you can just click the process button and it will carry on and run all those filters that we set up rename the files move them where you want whether it's locally or online so i mentioned the monitoring tool Let's just pull that up on screen here. And what you can do with this is have it watch a folder for you, one that's either local or via at the end of an FTP connection. Then it can apply a set of corrections to that, such as changing the file name, moving it from one location to another, or buying any of those filters I showed you a minute ago. In order to do that, you have to save these as a profile. So if I come up here and say profile of Andy's, profile like so save it in the main profiles box when i come into the monitor and i add a folder what i'm going to do is just add my social media folder here on my desktop where i stick all my resized social media images and i can then choose the profile that i want to use for that so let's select andy's profile so all of those settings that i put up here will then be applied to any images that appear in this folder. I can give this particular watch a name, so let's call it social media folder, and everything's ready to go. All I have to do is click OK, and it will then process all the photos that it finds in that folder with this profile. And here's our watch folder. And so you can have the batch uh, the monitoring tool just run a startup that's always there you know if your computer has to reboot because of some updates it will automatically run and continue monitoring your folders and that is batch photo guys you can get it at batchphoto.com it's available for mac and windows so let's talk pricing the version that i have been testing here with the auto folder watching functionality is the enterprise version which is 150 bucks and you can see a comparison chart here which shows you what you get with the different versions if you do want that auto folder watch option you do need the enterprise version if you only need to run these things manually and you're just going to drag your sd card onto the batch process main window there then the home and pro versions will probably suit you fine and that'll do us for this little review of batch photo guys how do you manage all this stuff how do you ingest your photos off the sd card and do you have a need for something that could perhaps upload your images automatically to an ftp server or run these automated processes on them what do you use at the moment let me know in the comment section down below till the next time guys ta-ta